going to talk about the movie Scream 2022. I know it's overdue. I know. I didn't watch it whenever it first came out. I watched it on Prime weeks ago. So yeah, this is overdue, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> So, the movie Scream 2022, I really wish they had it just called it Scream 5. Honestly, God, I wish they had it. Um, so, this one here takes place, it's after Scream 4, and it's another 10 years. Uh, the way this movie's been set up is that <coughs> Sydney, Dewey, and Gail are not the main characters anymore. Um, I mean, Dewey and Gale would still be like main characters, like supporting characters, but they're not like the central focus the way they were in the first four movies. Uh, the term requel has been used for this movie uh, instead of calling it a prequel or a sequel, requel, which is basically kind of like a spin off. It's whenever a film, you know, takes the same plot of a previous installment, usually the original, and they do something new with it and bring it in a new direction. And they tend to bring back legacy characters, you know, like the original cast, or the original cast from the original trilogy. A bit like Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens. It uh, brought back legacy characters, but had a whole new cast, new story, yet it's still set within the same timeline. Um, I think sometimes a requel can break continuity, where it can retcon a film. For example, Jurassic World. Um, I think it retconned where Jurassic Park 3 doesn't exist anymore, it's not in a, a continuity, it's not canon. So, uh, but with Scream it, it didn't do that, all the other movies are canon. So um, I, I actually like this movie and I, I did enjoy it, I know it got a lot of hate and I can understand why. I, I think the movie was, was a bit overhyped though, it didn't really shock me very much, I didn't even find Dewey's death that shocking, I mean hell they were going to kill the guy originally in the first movie. And they decided not to, sure Dre was going to be the killer in the first movie. But, um, so this movie starts off with a girl at her own house and she gets a phone call from Ghostface. And I, I, I kind of clocked on immediately that, that it was Ghostface, uh, the way it was carried out. And I, I like how it was, she cleverly used the internet to get the answers. And I was looking at, I think, IMDb when she was asked, you know, who was the original killer in Scream uh, or Killers. And it was Stu Marsher and Billy Loomis. Uh, that was clever, and they actually broke the chain this time. Where, like in the first four movies, uh, the person who gets attacked by Ghostface is always killed. Whereas in this one, this is the first time in the series that um, the victim who's attacked by Ghostface at the start survives. That was new. I, I liked that. There, you know, you were always, you know, the first four movies would set the tone. To be like, oh, this is Ghostface, he's back, this is his new victim, and they're gonna die. But this time, the victim lived and made it to the hospital, which was clever. And it's also the sister of the main protagonist of the movie. Um, this film, uh, I, I don't think it's as bad as people make it out to be. I really don't. Um, I, I, th I think I understand why people are, you know, they felt that the, the plot was silly, the reason for the killings was silly. I can, I can understand that there. But Scream has always been about being meta, you know, to follow the trends and just parody everything that movies are doing in this current generation. I don't know if this is the direction that Wes Craven would have took it in. Maybe he would have, maybe not, I don't know. But um, it's interesting that they actually do make it a requel where legacy characters are brought back but it focuses on new characters. Uh, I mean, you think about it, you know, the likes of Dewey, Gale and... Uh, Sydney or they're not old old but they're middle aged now. Um I think there's only so much you can do with those characters before it becomes stale. You know, it would basically be watching the first scream all over again for the fifth time. <coughs> <coughs> so they have um I like how they brought Deputy Hicks back from Scream Four. I like that there. I was hoping we'd see her again. But I didn't really like the fact that they killed her off. You know, can we at least have one main character or one character that appears from like Scream 4, then Scream 5, Scream 6, can we do that there? You know, like nobody, like, it's it's rare, like, the only characters that have survived three movies, more than three movies in a row, are the original cast. Well, yeah, apart from Dewey, but he, he lived to the fifth movie. 
whereas Gail, him and uh, Sydney made a past three movies. Can we at least have another character uh, that actually does make past three movies or so? Or lives to the third movie and dies in it? Can we? No, of course not. So, uh, the, the reason for the ghost face killings is that the uh, toxic fandom, I think, uh, they don't like the way movies are made these days and they're pissing all over it and I totally get that there. I mean, look at Star Wars Episode 8, episode eight The Last Jedi. It's all about creating a divide now. It's all films are... It's not often that you get a... Films are... The way they're made now, you know, I think it's because of the internet. The internet is to blame. People have uh, their own opinions and they're louder now that they're on the internet. Um, Star Wars Episode 8, The Last Jedi being very divisive because uh, you either loved it or you hated it. There was like no in between, no middle ground there. And this is the reason why uh, I think the two new killers are, are killing people because they want to send a message out <laughs> they stopped doing that. I think that was the reason. It's been a while since I watched it. Um, I, th I like the throwbacks to the, the previous films. You know, they acknowledge that they're anyway back to Deputy Hicks. The way how she was killed off was like, I think Ghostface was smart in this one here. You know, she goes out, I think, to pick up some like, groceries or something, and then she gets phone off from Ghostface saying that he's going to kill her son. She comes back and expecting to see her son dead or so, and then Ghostface uh, actually lured her under a trap. He wanted her to come back to so kill her. Like, she would have been a threat. You know, we had to kill her there and then, because if she had been alive throughout the rest of the movie, like, Dewey would also be a liar, I'd say. You know, they would have been together probably and took uh, Ghostface down. Because if you remember the scene whenever Dewey goes to shoot Ghostface, you know, phone rings and then Ghostface attacks him. Like, Deputy Hicks would have been a well, sheriff, De Sheriff Hicks, actually, she's a sheriff now. She would have been bang, that's it. That's it. You know, would have been much of a movie then. Uh, the main character, I forget her name, her and her friends, like, all get together and they're trying to work out, you know, okay. Ghostface is back for the fifth time. Why? And then they start looking at, I think, you know, modern pop culture. And they come to the realization that uh, there's, a, there's a new pattern here and following the current trends of how movies are made. Apparently, uh, Matthew Lillard, who played Stu Marsher in the um, first screen movie, he is supposed to be in a cameo. He's meant to be the scream that you see with the flamethrower. And the trailer misled us, they had us believing that, oh, Ghostface is going to be coming after our heroes with a flamethrower this time around. No, that was just like a five second uh, video, somebody dressed as Ghostface using a flamethrower. It's not doing that, okay? Seeing Ghostface with a flamethrower would have been epic, that would have been class to see that. You know, but I suppose it would have took away what he's all about, he's usually all about using knives. You know, he doesn't really use a gun that I can recall. Always stabbing people and cutting their hoods on, gutting them. They had to kill off Dewey. They really had to, you know, a legacy character had to die, especially with a requel they bring back. The character, I think with a requel, the character, they, the legacy character that they bring back has to die, at least one of them or two. And it, it basically makes way for the new characters and allows others to step into the light. I do like how we got to see uh, Stu Marker's house, or Stu Marker's house again, uh, from Scream 1. Uh, I recognised the interior design immediately, I even recognised the house in the trailer for Scream. Um, I knew right away that's where they were and they were playing it out similar to how the first movie had played out and they had all the lovely references to the stab movies as well just acknowledging what came before while making hey, making way for the new so we've got um, the, the ghost face killer Amber I think she should have had more screen time um, she was a crazy bitch that character um, there's one line let's just say it that kind of got me and I was like oh right and uh, she shouts, um, it's not a bona fide Halloween without Jamie Lee. And I was thinking, what? Oh, wait, you mean the Halloween franchise with Jamie Lee Curtis? Fun fact, by the way, I'm named after Jamie Lee Curtis. I'm Jamie Lee Stewart. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you, you can imagine my surprise. You know, when it feels like, how, how meta can that movie get? You know, it... it <laughs> <coughs> yeah, that, that was funny. Um, I love how she had her face burned, and then I, I knew when she was taken out, she was going to get back up and go for having one last scare. And this, all the screen movies have pretty much done that there. 
they either think the killer's dead and then I'll have to make sure that she really is dead or that they're really dead. And then they just get back her from the last car. She comes at them with a knife like a psychopath screaming. Yeah. And then they kill her off. I really think I should have a ghost face killer survive a scream movie to appear in the next one. That'd be so cool. You know, they, a go, the, ghost faces, you know, only usually last one film. Um, you never really see them again. They might be mentioned the odd time. Or you'll hear like flashbacks or see flashbacks of them, but it's very rare. When the killer's done, that's it. Film goes on to the next one. Um, I, I, am, I, probably, I am intrigued to see where Scream 6 goes. You know, because um, apparently, I think they're, they're about to fill they're, they're casting right now and they have ideas. And Neve Campbell isn't coming back. It's something to do with money. Like, she feels that she's not being paid up to the standard that she should be for being the face of the franchise from day one. I haven't looked into that very much, so I have not really got much of an opinion on it. Um, I, know, I know Matthew Lear is supporting her there. So this this movie, some people have said that Ghostface is a real motherfucker in this movie. I don't think he was. Um, I, I'd say the Ghostface in Scream 3 was a bit more of a motherfucker. A bit more crafty with his uh, techniques and all. But uh, let's listen here. I like it, how they brought uh, your guy Billy Lewis back. Um, you're on your girl's listen, and there's a twist there where uh, the main character is actually his daughter, uh, which means that uh, at some point, uh, not only did Billy Lewis murder Sydney Prescott's mum, but he also cheated on her to hang her back with God knows how many women. If uh, that's the case, you know, if you got one daughter, you might have another daughter, or another son somewhere. But that that was an interesting way to bring him back, and. Um, I'll tell you this, Skate Aldrich has not aged a day, unless they put a lot of makeup on him. But I think it was like 25, 26 years since Scream 1 and Scream 5, and he still looks and sounds very much the same. I mean, I, now, that is also me as well, like I'm 30 years old, but then um, since I put my hair like this here and shaved, um, I near enough get asked for ID. You know, I'm 30 and I don't look at the lack of half the freaking time after. And I don't get offended either because I mean, it's like the youth in me. But, um, I don't think, I'd, I think I'd be extremely lucky in the next 25 years if I still look like this. <laughs> I, I doubt that, I'd say I will age. I will probably age. Uh, it's just good genes. But, um, I like how the, the uh, Amber's, uh, not Amber, the main character, the female lead, the heroine, her boyfriend, and it. Um, the way he he's just smooth throughout the film, and he turns out to be the second killer. His performance, the way he was written, I I, I like that there. You know, they really did try to throw you off that he was involved. Like you would be thinking, watch the movie. There's no way this guy's the killer. And um, the other character needs her inhaler, and they have to go to the nearest uh, friend's house to go and get it. And he's like, no, we're not going. He's like trying to sway them, convince them not to go to the house. You know, that was a good throwaway, you know. So we wouldn't suspect them, but it turns out he wanted them to go to the house for the uh, overall finale. It was cool to see them all back in the kitchen as well. And <coughs> just a reminder, you know, that's where the first movie took place. And there were Billy and Stu had Sydney cornered, and then Sydney's cornered again in the, the same room, uh, like a couple of decades later. And I like how she's more like, you know, Fuck this, I'm done, I'm gonna kill you, where are you? I just have a gun to go around the house. Like she's just at this point she's had enough. She really has. Like she's the ghost face expert here. No she's just doing and trying to get it. And she pretty much what she hears about the new ghost face killing, she doesn't really want to go back to Woodsboro, but then she ends up coming back anyway. And turns out she's a mum now, she has her own kids. Um it's um I'm not sure if the movie revealed this here or I know online the director's not I think have confirmed that her husband is the detective that she was with in Scream 3, which I think was a nice throwback. I'd say these directors who took over actually, you know, did a pretty good job, you know, at trying to maintain the movie trend, you know, of pop culture. They've done pretty well. It would have been interesting to see what Wes Craven would have done with it, but unfortunately, you know, he passed away in 2015. And I, I don't know if they've used any of his ideas, you know, or inspirations that he, he gave them for another screen movie. I know that right up to his deathbed he was writing, you know, 
notes and all for the Scream TV series. He was doing that, writing treatments and all, drafts, and submitted them, and I think they were used, he was an executive producer on that um, this, 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 uh, TV series. Well, an ethics series, to be honest. Um, I feel... I... I like. I did like this one. I, th I wouldn't say I loved it, but it was. It was still fun to watch, and it did drag out. But I didn't really mind it, you know. And the the new characters were likable, and I can see why some people thought they were bland. I think the problem was that people were fans were just so used to seeing, you know, Sydney, Dewey, and Gail together, you know, solving the ghost face murders. But um, this one here decided to go in a new direction with new characters, and I, I understand that. I think, in a way, that's probably what the franchise needed. <coughs> you know, they, they might have just done it at the wrong time, or they might have just done it at the right time. I don't know. I don't really give a fuck. But um, I, I, I thought it was alright. You know, I don't think it. Was, I don't think it's as bad as people said it is. You know, that somebody like, they, they did try their best with it. They did. I'm trying to keep my eyes open. I'm six hours of sleep. Ugh. Fuck it. I think that's all I have to say. I never really do this, but I'm gonna do it anyway. See in the comments. Let me know what's your favorite scary movie. <laughs> Come on, Jimmy Lee, you can do better than that.